They still sent over their Gladius 2. This is the more FPS style gaming mouse and it's actually a pretty awesome mouse. The second generation has a sniper button on the side and a 12,000 DPI sensor. So let's take a look at it. The box is pretty stylish and also features an open door design so that you can take a look at the mouse and some of the main features. The other features are also listed on the side and the back as well, although of course I'll be going to detail on those in the video, so uh, you know, stick around for those. And inside the box you get the mouse itself, a nice carrying bag, two USB cables, these are proprietary micro USB cables that allow them to lock into the mouse as you'll see in a second. Uh, one of them is a shorter sort of rubber coated one, another one is the one that you're likely going to use which is a longer braided cable, and otherwise you get some documentation and two extra Omron switches, more on the in a second. The mouse features an ASUS ROG logo on the back as well as uh, lots of surface area on the sides, especially for your ring and pinky fingers which is actually very nice. On the left hand side you have a sniper button and two extra buttons which are normally mapped to back and forward, although with the ASUS uh, ROG Armory software uh, you can actually customise that to do really much anything you fancy. You can actually customise all of the buttons on the mouse as well including the DPI changing button at the top, the sniper button on the side obviously the two buttons you can also change what the scroll wheel does uh, both up and down and the middle click and what the left and right mouse click buttons do as well if you so fancy you can also change the lighting profiles as well and with this mouse you do have a lighting zone on the scroll wheel the rear uh, RG logo and an underglow which can actually be very difficult to see but is very stylish if you do end up looking at it. On the bottom of the mouse you have the locking connector at the top which is actually fairly stiff to both uh, unlock and lock the mouse it's actually quite difficult to get the cable in but of course that means that it's not going to be falling out anytime you're playing games and uh, I doubt that you're actually going to use this feature all that much unless you you know regularly travel in which case this could be a nice addition but overall still a nice feature just below that you have the sensor hole now this won't tell me what sensor it is so if you know please let me know in the comments down below but they list it as a 12,000 dpi sensor so likely something at very least comparable to something like the pixar 3360 so something uh, fairly decent as well Otherwise you have a couple of grommeted holes here that you can actually remove them and remove the screws that are inside them to open up the mouse. If you do open up the mouse you can see obviously the LEDs in the back and that sort of thing but the main thing you're going to notice is actually the replaceable Omron switches up the front. Now you actually get two extra switches included in the box as well so I suppose if you don't like the feel of the ones that are in the mouse or you want to just change them out or they break or for whatever reason you can do that fairly easily. It's actually pretty nice that you can obviously maintain the mouse nice and easily as well uh, so that is pretty cool the overall design seems fairly robust although the switches on the side are actually Kali switches not Omron so something to note there the mouse feels fairly comfortable in the hand now of course it's fairly similar to stuff like the Razer Death Adder and uh, perhaps even the Steel Series Rival 300 so a fairly overall similar shape although I must mention that the price on this mouse is considerably higher than a lot of them in fact even the Steel Series Rival 700 which uh, actually has a screen on the side has a vibration motor inside uh, and very similar overall features actually costs basically the same if not less than this mouse so something to, to bear in mind there. When gaming with a mouse I was really impressed with the overall accuracy it didn't feel like it was accelerating at all which was very nice although of course you can set that up in the settings in the RG Armory software if you so prefer but for me the main drawback with the mouse is actually the sniper button in its position. Now for me someone with medium to large hands it really was basically in the way of where my thumb wants to rest on that sort of mouse and meant that I was actuating the button you know, by accident fairly regularly when gaming, even just picking up the mouse to move it's right where my thumb sits. So it can be a little bit annoying and I wish it was a little bit further forward or even how Corsair do it with the scimitar where you can move it back and forward, something like that or even if it was just a little bit more difficult to press or if it was uh, if it didn't jut out as much as it does come out quite a, quite a way. So there is a room for improvement for someone with medium to large hands personally here uh, and it's just something to, to bear in mind if you do have medium to large hands you might not necessarily see the benefit of that sniper button. So overall I think this is a pretty great mouse it does set a very high price point especially considering the competition in the market. I think the sniper button is more aimed to people who are either claw grippers or who uh, have smaller hands on the hole so that's something to, to bear in mind. I think my overall opinion of it is that it's a nice mouse but it is a bit too expensive especially considering that for example the 
Logitech MX Master, which is actually, I've got a review coming out very shortly for, is actually, I think, 20 pounds cheaper than it, and is also wireless, has a scroll wheel on the side, has gestures, and has a very similar amount of buttons, uh, and is equally as accurate and that sort of thing. So, uh, while it's not directly comparable, it's also not a gaming mouse necessarily. Even stuff like the SteelSeries Rival 700, which the review for that is uh, only a couple weeks old, um, is, you know, a very similar mouse, it's a very similar experience, but that one has a vibration motor, has a screen on the side of it, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So, I think it's quite hard to justify the price for this one, uh, although, of course, there is a sort of ASUS tax as well, so that is uh, something to bear in mind. When it comes to scoring for me, I think it's going to be a 3.5 for Vive Money. I think in terms of performance, it's going to be a 5, with functionality sitting at a rounded 4, I think. In terms of styling for me, it's very stylish, and obviously the underglow just adds style points here, so I think it's going to be a 5 for that, and a Texture BB score of a 4. I think it's a worth money award if you can afford it and you're not after one of the Razer or SteelSeries offerings in the similar category. Uh, and obviously do have a look, and especially if you can get yourself down to a hardware store and actually play with the mouse and hold it in your hand and see what's more comfortable for you. I think that's probably the best uh, step if you are looking to get one of these sorts of mice. So otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. If you want to know any more about the mouse or anything else, check out the links in the description down below to Amazon and Overclockers UK. It'd be awesome if you could use those links. They are affiliate links they genuinely help me out, they support the channel, they keep me making these videos, so if you could do that, that'd be fantastic. You can also support me by checking out Facebook and Twitter, and of course subscribing and sharing the video, and I'll also leave a link to merchandise, uh, some of which is Titan GB related, and some of which is just generally sort of tech funny related, so take a look at those, you can get t-shirts and stickers and all that sort of stuff, so do take a look at that. Otherwise, as I said, check me out on Facebook and Twitter as well, at TechGB on both. I'll leave some of the videos over here for you, and the subscribe button over this side, and otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative and useful. As I said, if you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe and share the video if you can. And otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.